All right, weekend sports betting tips on the Barroom Network. Welcome back. We're going to talk some Final Four here. we got Anthony from Pounded Sports and Mr. Sean Higgs uh, sending out the tweet right now. Take it all questions for uh, weekend sports wagering. Uh, focus on Final Four tonight. you got UConn versus Alabama, North Carolina State versus Purdue. Um, let me just get that tweet going out. All right, it is out. Join us live. We've got about 30 people watching right now. All right, let's get into the final four. We've got one team, didn't nobody expect to be there, but they're there. Two, yeah. two teams, maybe. Two, two teams, maybe. I didn't expect to be there. Uh, Could be worse. Could be worse. Right. Let's, uh, right, before we get in there, I forgot we're supposed to talk a little bit about some promos. All right, sign up for VIP at poundedsports.com with Anthony. Anthony, tell us uh, about the specials. I know you got baseball special going on right now, and you're like red hot. Like baseball, you're like 30 and 5. 40 and 15 and 1 going into today. 73%. I mean, it's just an unreal run. Everything's just, I don't know how to say it, just looks great. Baseball is my favorite sport. If anyone knows me, I love baseball inside and so. out. Players, everything. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm doing BOGO on weekly. If you sign up for the weekly pass, Get one week, get the second week free. So go to Pound of Sports. Great deal. And up and let's make some money. Great deal. I, I expect to win now. I'm spoiled. <laughs> yeah, I'm spoiling too. Like, I got to. I got to. I got to charge you a vig. <laughs> Past two nights, I think I'm like four, eight and zero. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I say I go five and three. Tooch plays four plays. He wins all four. He's like, oh, yeah. I picked the right four. I picked the right <laughs> ones. Yeah. <laughs> Tooch is like twenty and one in the last twenty one. Yeah, uh, nine, nine, 19, 5, and 1. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, uh, <darn. laughs> Sign up with Mr. Sean Higgs at winningfreepicks.com. Sean, what do you got going on over there? Yeah, and I'm a nice little baseball run. Not um, I, I, One of the sites posted like a 15 and 4 run. Overall, though, 62% for the year. Yeah, right. And, and they're all – it's that's not, it's not nerfies and stuff like that. That's all – Full game side totals eight and two in totals, but you know, sides pretty good on as well. And uh, if you use promo code midday, you get 20% off. And uh, right. a weekly pass would be $31.20, which is a weekly pass yeah. for me. Baseball, you're going to get just probably about 30 plays for the week. I mean, today I only had two, I got the Orioles already cash, I got the Reds. Yep, uh, but most days you're going to get uh, quite a few games, quite a few games. You'll get it's easy because I mean, there, if there's a lot of games on, I mean, between. It's just so many yeah. options, and then of it's course, if, and if and, uh, and on top of that, if you're in the midday money show, you're going to get uh, player props in there as well that are have gone pretty well so far. We got um, who do I got? I got we got brave props going now. We got Michael Harris running ribby and uh, Travis Bernard ribby and a uh, Arcia ribby. So we'll see how that goes. All big plus monies there. So, all right, uh, let's get down to final four. Uh, it's a sad time for me as college basketballs. Coming to a close. These are the final two days of college basketball. Uh, love college basketball. It's like my favorite time of the year. We got uh, women's games too, right? Is that uh, tonight? Uh, Iowa UConn tonight too with uh, Kate not McCall. really Sean's uh, uh, best right. sport, but I'll, I could take over for that one. <laughs> I'll come back when we talk about something worthwhile. <laughs> I'll just we'll just go through it real quick. I'll just I mean I don't know squat to be honest with you with this. Uh, is it's not South Carolina? Who's the number one team? They're like minus uh, South, eleven and a half. South Carolina. It is so. Yeah. I know squad. Never watched them, so I have no idea. But the Iowa Connecticut, a little in depth. Iowa's favored minus two and a half. They are by far the better scoring team 
as in UConn has got a phenomenal defense, but they really only have one true uh, score in the down um, at the perimeter, but they have a great defense in the paint. So if um, Iowa's going to be scoring, not going to be too many layups. They're going to be relying on those threes and jump shots. So it's going to be a great game. I think it's tight, but it comes that- down to if how good can UConn stop um, the jump shots and how, how good uh, can they – guard the paint because Iowa can score at any point of the uh, the court. Three, two, layups, draw fouls, and they showed it versus LSU, so it's going to be a great game. All right. Uh, women's game that... Uh, uh, we got Purdue-NC State up. Let's go. Purdue-NC State. Yeah, there we go. It's 8 o'clock tonight, uh, Iowa game. Uh, NC State-Purdue. Uh, NC State DJ Burns captured uh, uh, you know the, the hearts of a lot of uh, people who are watching this Six nine, uh, uh, I call him a fat kid, but I mean he's so good, man. I, he's got great feet. His legs. He's a big, he's a big boy, I, man. Yeah, six six nine, two seventy five versus seven four. Zach Eady, um, and then of course uh, produce jump shooters, three point shooters, and uh, uh, NC State has been tough. They've been resilient. You got uh, Horn, who's been playing well, and they've got uh, Diara, who's also going to be helping out on Edie, but. It's Ramadan, so Tiara has been, you know, uh, hasn't been available full time. They'll be monitoring his uh, his uh, uh, minutes and stuff with, that, with fasting, you know, during Ramadan. Uh, we'll start with uh, Mr. Anthony in the middle there. Uh, NC State, Purdue, uh, a lot of points for a Final Four game in both these games, actually. Plus nine and a half of kind of leaning towards NC State. We're waiting for Matt Painter to. Uh, I don't know. Choke, choke went out. Purdue has played very well the whole tournament. I cannot touch this Purdue minus nine and a half. I, don't, I really don't even know where they get the number from because you, this is going to be the first time in the tournament that Edie has someone almost his size. I mean, not, maybe not tall, but Burns is wider than freaking Edie. Yeah. And I'm going to say he's stronger, but uh, Edie's more athletic. Yep. But I got to say, Burns can shoot. I mean, we saw the last game. And it comes down to Purdue's three-point shooting because when Edie doesn't have the ball, it comes down to three-point shooting. There is, if I lose with NC State at plus nine and a half, I lose. But there is no way I'm going to be sweating a Purdue minus nine and a half here. Yeah, me either. State plus nine and a half. Yep, I'm on the dog as well. Um, look, uh, Zach Edie does a real good job of staying out of foul trouble. He, he doesn't need to to jump up on people. He's just so damn tall. He just stands up, puts his arms yeah. up, but. Uh, 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 BJ Burns is so skilled when he gets down low. I think he was like 60% shooting from, uh, from close range last game. Uh, and let's not forget, not trying to cut you off, but NC state was down 11 to Duke. Duke was running away yeah. with the game yep. and they came right back and Second half. Into a ball game. They didn't just Run outright. They didn't just, uh, fall. Okay. Hey, we're losing. Okay. Yep. Game over. No, they fought back. They got some heart. I'm not, yep. and I gotta say, I mean, all four of these teams have a lot of momentum going to it, but there's a weakness to them. Edie yep. is the nucleus of Purdue. You stop Edie, you stop Purdue. Nobody has that, been able to do it. That's the thing. NC Nobody State stops them. is the same thing. You stop Burns, you pretty much stop NC State. But yep. overall, they play great defense, and uh, I just, I just think nine and a half is just way too much. Call me crazy, like I said. If I lose with NC State, I lose. I, I had a big uh, uh, bet on. Uh, NC State plus the points versus Duke. I just knew that they were going to keep it close. I didn't. I didn't expect them to win outright, but they did. Sean, uh, nine and a half. Too many points for you as well. I, I want to take both the dogs here. And, yep. and again, it's nine and a half. But are they? What are they trying to tell you with this? You could see yeah. the UConn one. UConn just been. But this one here, just the way NC State's playing, you want to take. It's like you want to take the nine and a half. They got Burns. Even who's he got? Uh, uh, Dia. What's the other kid's name? Dara? Diara, Diara. Yeah. Yep. He's another big Mom, cat. I mean, he's six eleven. He, he yeah. he's a skinny guy, but he, he's a, another big kind of body. Shorter rotation, obviously. Horn's pretty good. Yeah. They haven't shot the ball well, but like you just said, Anth, and you know, our guy Jesse Shu was talking about too. The defense at NC State has been really carrying them. It's mm-hmm. okay. You want to blame teams for shooting bad? Well, what's the? They're playing NC State. Is it the courts? Everybody's shooting on the same neutral court. Give them a little credit on the defense. I didn't have them getting past the first round. All right, they upset NC State. They had, or they beat North Carolina. They had beaten Duke. All right, party's over. No, no, no. 
almost lost there, right? A little overtime versus uh, who's that? Oakland. Yeah. Down, down against Duke. Battle back. And I don't, you know, but the Purdue did. You have to say Purdue showed some heart last game, right? They oh, they were far. down, yeah. down all the way back. Took a little five, six, seven point lead. Tied it up. Was down a little bit. That's where you thought the ghost of Christmas past would show up for them. We're like, oh my goodness, it's happened again. We're going to lose. No, they pulled away and and got a decent sized win. Um, I don't know. It's I want to take NC State, but it's just the other side of me is just screaming. It's Purdue. I think this is an in-game kind of spot. Are they gonna Are they gonna call the fouls? Everybody's talking about Edie getting all the foul calls, so they're not gonna no. Are they not but gonna like call a, anything? He doesn't foul. Are they gonna let him play? Yeah, but I mean, him getting fouled to go into the line twenty two right. times. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, he gets in trouble. He for, averages he two stayed. fouls a game only. Isn't yeah. that crazy? Two fouls a game. Yeah, but why? How, how? No one's going at him. I mean, well, what, I'm, no, I'm just saying in general, it's he's he's never in foul trouble. How could you get in foul? Hey, I'm going to drive the ball at this guy and, and, and draw contact. Who are you, Illinois? Illinois tried that against UConn. How'd that work out? He's just going to swat <laughs> things. So <laughs> most they had the right like, idea, gonna, but it just I'm going to avoid him and not draw contact, right? I mean, but Burns is – he's a guy who's going to throw a body on him. So are they going to call fouls? Are they going to be like, let him play? Because I'll tell you, let him play, that, that's going to help NC State more than anything. You got that right. Yep. Uh, I yeah, think this a is like call. a good in-game kind. Of, I think it's more of like an in-game. You got to see. I, and again, thank you for being 2024 and not 1994, where you could say, "Well, let's see how they they call this before you kind of jump into." It. You could say, "Wow, they're calling a bunch of fouls." Uh, Purdue's going to pull away late because NC State's going to get foul trouble and they're going to be. Yep. I was going to say you made a good point. Yep. This might come down to the officiating. How, yeah. yeah. Is it? I mean, there, I mean, if you've watched enough of these games throughout the tournament, there's two separate kinds of officiating. There's the officiating that doesn't call any fouls, that just lets them play, which I love. And then there's the officiating, which is literally every time a possession comes, foul, foul. Oh, you're arguing? Technical. You're arguing too? Technical. I mean, did you guys see that one game? Oh, my God. I wish I knew. Remember, I remember I was telling Tooch that, I mean, one coach had two technicals in just one conversation just because yeah. he was arguing with them. I mean, it was – I've never seen anything like it. I was like, a team went from tied to down 11 within under a minute. Because of the technical fouls and the free throws, it was just unheard of. Yeah, it should yeah. be a good one. People, people want to see you know Edie versus Klingon in the next Purdue versus UConn. You know, two number one seed, the the uh, the, the ugly stepchild of NC State. They don't want to see NC State in the finals. But uh, uh, conspiracy theories aside, if, if uh, like well, Anthony I mean, said, the, the rest could be favoring the, Purdue in this game. They're ten point underdogs to a team that lost four games all year, two of them by overtime. I said this last week. Purdue's lost two games, four games, two in overtime, and beat eight teams in the Sweet Sixteen. Personally, I, mean, I want to see UConn versus Purdue in the yeah. finals. To me, yeah. that is the matchup I've been. I'm dying to watch. I'm trying That's to find was, a common opponent. I, I just I hope NC State they, doesn't lose by double digits. I, I don't I don't see any common appointments but or common opponents between these two teams. But I tell you, in their 10 game winning streak, they beat North Carolina, they beat Duke twice, they beat Texas Tech, they beat Marquette. You know, and I bet uh, you half of those teams went into those games thinking nothing of it. It's like, oh yeah, we, you know. Yeah. I bet you that's what and I bet you when they played uh Duke last time, NC State, Duke was like, Okay, we're ready now. And then yeah. they're like, Holy shit, these guys are <laughs> They're Burns very resilient. Guys. Very they resilient. Couldn't stop Burns. That was the key. They couldn't stop Burns. NC you know, State I- lost to Tennessee early in the year in a neutral, and Purdue's beat them go. twice. Purdue beat there Tennessee twice. I yep. mean, remember Purdue beat Marquette and Tennessee and Arizona and all these yep. teams. Crane, they, they beat them all. Illinois yep. twice. Tennessee twice. Gonzaga twice. Yep. They really. Uh, uh, the question is. Nine and a half too much, and and the officiating. Which way is it going to go? That's, you know, to me, let them play. Yep. it's the officiating. They uh, what ten in a row? They had lost what three or four straight coming into the tournament. Uh, they had that crazy win to force overtime. Who was that? Sarah? Who was the the Virginia game after the Duke win? Right, the crazy shot at the end. For I mean, I get it. I don't know. Again, this is me jumping live. I think. I'm kind of looking at the over in this one, 146 and a half. Uh, I would know, leave the under because I think NC State's they're, they're going to control the pace. It, this is like a uh, halftime score of 32, maybe 25 type halftime score. Anthony likes the under. My I'll gut tells the me at the over, but uh, uh, Sean, what do you think uh, on the total? Total, uh, 
I'm going to say over because I, I, I kind of lean a little Purdue-ish here, so I think they're going to be able to score. So I would lean over. The, if there's a, if this scale goes over, Purdue covers the number. Yeah. If so it's Purdue, under, NC State covers. Purdue's covered the first half spread in 20 of their last 30 games. And uh, I still not say sure under the, because it's got to be about five and a half. No. Edie is going to have to score 25 plus, just like I said last week. He's going to have to score 25 plus if they're going to win this game. And it comes down to how much can Burns actually block Edie? Because Edie is a taller than Burns, but Burns is wider and, I mean, I don't want to say the stronger, fans, but. How they calling? How they calling the game? Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's going to be interesting because this is like the showdown. And I'm sure at the end of the day, Edie's going to win because this guy just finds a way to win matchups. And then we're going to see the UConn center. I don't mean, I forgot his name, but. Klingon. The Klingons. Klingons. Yeah, that versus Klingon. yep. Edie. And that's going to be the highlight. I mean. Frankenstein. That's what everybody's going to want to watch. And it's UConn is the America's team and Purdue is the still the villain. So I just hope Purdue uh, doesn't win by more than 10. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about Kling and then we hit the last uh, next matchup. Uh, Anthony's uh, thoughts on that halftime score tracks. North Carolina State has, has uh, only hit the game uh, game total uh, un- over in 16 of their last 35 games. And Purdue uh, is, is even worse, 20, 11 of their last 32. And if you so. like Purdue, honest, I mean, this is just my opinion. I'm not betting it. But if you like Purdue, I'd rather play the Purdue first half than play the Purdue. I, I, yeah, I'm thinking too. NC State, State was losing versus it, Duke. 100%. Yep. And these guys, they tend to be in foul trouble late in the first half. They go from the lead to trailing, mm-hmm. and then they get they, they rest. They keep all the starters on the bench, and the bench comes in, does a crap job, and they lose the lead. And then once the second half starts, NC State goes on an 8-0 run, and they're right back in the game. So that's just my opinion. Sean likes the live plays here. First half, uh, Purdue for minus five and a half interest. You at all? No, I gotta see how the. I gotta. It's all about the. I can't. Uh, I could wait till uh, I get a couple minutes. Are they calling fouls or not calling fouls? Then I'll decide where I think this mm-hmm. game will go. I just don't see Purdue being down at halftime. I'm just gonna stick to it. Purdue's gonna dominate the first half. And if NC, NC State has any shot of winning this, it's gonna be shown in the second half, not the first half. Yep. Sean, have any prop plays going for this game uh, no. for your clients? No, no college props. I don't do that. No. All right. I gave out one play on this game. That's it. Nothing special. Uh, Alabama, Connecticut. All Let's right. Here we go. Get, get down to it. Uh, look, last week uh, versus uh, the Illini, when uh, when Klingon was on the court, the Illini shot five for 38. It was down low versus Klingon. Uh, their strategy was to shoot the ball into his armpit, Sean. Versus, yeah, uh, I don't know what their, their game plan was there. I, <laughs> I, 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 I took the points. I'm thinking, okay, I look up, and it's a 25-2 to two run in the second half for UConn. What are you doing? I, we're going to get them this time. Okay. That's not going to be the case. Uh, Alabama, and again, I like Alabama here. UConn points over, team total over, yes. Look at the scores of UConn. I mean, they're giving up 52, 52, 58, 52, 57 in their last five games. But they're yep. scoring 91, 82, 77, 75. So it, Alabama's, not, Alabama's not a team that wants to slow down. They, they want to play up. So UConn's like, oh, you want to play that way? We'll play that way. And we're not going to miss balls like mm-hmm. the other team wants to play. You know, So they're going to score their points. I just feel Alabama, as they're like top three-point shooting team. Right? They shoot threes. Yeah. So yep. – Hey, I'm taking the points, or I'm thinking they're going to uh, hit a couple of these, and it's it'll be a, uh, a cl- listen, 11 and a half. I get it. This is the team that's probably not supposed to be there with their bad defense. The total's super high. I get it. And even if they're hitting some, uh, is UConn? I, I don't know. Maybe they want to play the best a game three like three point defense. In do, the do they want to play like a St. John's game and go 95 90, like a Creighton 87 80, like get up there? Maybe. Uh, but that's a lot asking. In a championship type game, I mean, this is the semis. I don't know. I, I think Alabama's going to hit their threes. Though. That's the key. I'm thinking Alabama's hitting threes and getting 11 and a half points. They're not going to drive inside like Illinois did. They're like, get the hell out of here. I mean, even the coach said he goes, "Well, I tell you what, I'm not going to drive the ball to some giant man in the middle and hope uh, hope he doesn't block it." I mean, the coach just said that. What do you think their game plan is going to be? Bombs well, away. Bombs away. The last time uh, UConn lost, Creighton was bombs away. They shot 50 percent from three. And uh, uh, they was the last team to beat uh, uh, UConn, thirty-five and three. Alabama on the other side, 
25 and 11, but they have played the toughest schedule in all of college basketball this season. Number one hardest schedule, 25 and 11. Uh, They shoot the three very well. If the threes aren't falling for Alabama, Anthony, it doesn't uh, matter. It's not. It doesn't matter because they can't hit their free throws. So they can hit all the threes they want because after miss shot, miss shot, miss shot. UConn's going to get the ball in transition. Boom, easy two. Boom, easy two. Yeah, keep missing your uh, free throws. You can go, uh, what, 15 for 25? Well, UConn's going to go 25 for 30 in in that uh, type of sense. Last week, my best play, that's why I didn't give it out, was uh, my 10-unit bomb on the under, UConn and Illinois, under 155.5. I'm not going to lie. I asked Sean's opinion. He liked the over, and I – because I respect his his uh, opinion, I got so nervous. <laughs> well, that's, I, I, like, I was on what? <laughs> I was on Illinois, and I'm thinking if Illinois is going to cover that game, they got to score some points. Yep. So I mean, but that game was no doubter, no sweat. I mean, I've never yeah. played a ten unit bomb in, in a no sweat game like that. But in this game, I mean, I liked Illinois in that game too. But I think the under one fifty five and a half, the way UConn plays in their defense, yep. and that was the. Dream come true in that first half for an under team. Um, this I game, I'm going Illinois with the under. Team total under 73 and a half. With, I'm Easy going with money. the under again. And the reason is because Bama is going to have to hit their free throws and win this game. And I, it's one of those things where you just like see it ahead of time. Well, how do most teams lose in the tournament? There's two different ways they lose. One, it's their threes. T- Tennessee should have lost to Texas solely because they couldn't hit a three. Marquette should have lost to Colorado solely because they couldn't hit their threes. And then the second way is teams cannot hit their damn free throws. And there's tons of games of those. (laughs) And I think this is the game that Bama just cannot hit their damn free throws. Because think about it. They almost blew the game versus North Carolina because they couldn't hit their damn free throws. Now you're you're playing the cream of the crop, the best team that I've seen in college basketball. Me too. I mean, I thought the Baylor team was freaking good from a few years ago. I think UConn rolls on that Mm -hmm. Baylor team. Um, I'm rolling it. Call me crazy, but give me the UConn with the points. But my favorite play in this game is the under. I'm rolling with the under. Bama couldn't score versus Grand Canyon. They're hell not going to score versus UConn. Uh, Last uh, uh, time I I had uh, an Illinois team total under 73 and a half because we talked about how UConn wasn't letting teams get into the 60s with their defense. Yeah. Uh, so I, I lean towards the under in this game too. But let me throw a, a stat at you. Alabama uh, has hit the game total over 27 of their last 36. The score total has gone over. Uh, yeah, but in the, the last few games, they've been rolling under since the Grand Canyon games. The uh, tournament, I, that most of their games have gone under in the tournament. Were they actually, three and two? Actually, Actually, their yeah, last game went over 163. Oh, it did go over last game. Okay. Over 175. They went under Grand Canyon over Charleston before that game. And I then, went okay. then, okay. then over – yeah, you got it backwards because they went over okay. eight of the last ten. The only under is – They must have squeaked by that over in the last – at the end of the second half because the first half's all went under. I know that. And I was like, oh, this game was going way under. and must have cashed. Alabama's hit the team total over in 24 yeah. of the last 36. 100, 104 points in the second half. Yeah, well, yeah, you can't, you can't predict that shit. What's uh, <laughs> what's the team total uh, for Alabama in this one? I might take a look at the under in that one. but It's probably, what, 70-something? It's got to be 75, maybe, I'm going to guess. Let me see. I'm going to say low 70s if it's 161 with UConn, right? 72, 73? Yeah, Illinois was 73 and a half or 72 and a half, I think. 120 points in the second half of the Charleston game. <laughs> yeah, that's disgusting. You, yeah, that's just disgusting. If you had the under and you're look, you're, you're just basically you turned it off in the first half and you wake up the next morning, it's like, how the hell did I lose this? <laughs> I will get you that. Uh, team totals are 86 and a half for Connecticut, 74 and a half for Alabama. That's close. Yep. One number off. I said 75, yep. Uh, 74 and a half. Uh, what do you like, Sean, team totals? I would go UConn under. over. I like. I, I, I think it's. I think Alabama is going to score. I like Alabama points. I like the UConn over. Team total That's over. Team total. Sean over. likes the over. I kind of – I'm going I, the opposite just yeah, like last I kinda week. I kind of like the unders in this, but uh, – I just don't think it's going to be – I mean, the logical perception is a lot of scoring, but yep. I just – 
just like versus the Illinois game? I'm like, no, absolutely. Well, not. if you Something like, happen. if you like uh, a lot of scoring, you gotta like UConn to cover that eleven. If, and a half, if, if UConn, here's the thing. I'm not saying the game total. I'm saying UConn team total. Oh, if they're, if they're yeah. allowing 52, 52, 58, 52, and 57, and scoring 77, 82, 75, 91, and 73 versus teams that Play don't want to push it, like San Diego yeah. State's not a real push. Yeah, game. Alabama does. Northwestern push definitely doesn't want to push it. Stetson yeah. didn't want to push it. Marquette's yeah. sort of a team, and they scored. You don't think they're going to be able to score points on Alabama? I mean, oh, yeah. they might get eight. It could easily be 86, 44. I mean, and Alabama's throwing thing. bricks up. Yeah. Every game in the tournament. I just happen to watch it. If you look, Bama's in foul trouble at late uh, with ten minutes left in the game. Every there's like two or three players with either three fouls or four fouls, so they foul a lot, which means UConn's going to the line yeah, yeah. a lot in this game. Yeah, yeah. they're not going to get as many points at the rim as uh, as they're used to getting, which means they're going to be. Uh, and, and and Nate Oates knows that they're going to. He's he's going to be bombs away. You know, and, and uh, UConn doesn't play at the fastest pace, but they're they're uh, so efficient on offense. Yeah, exactly, yeah. that's the thing. That, Again, uh, you can put them on line. Their top three guys are getting ninety percent free throw shooters. Yeah. Yep. that's why they're so deadly. It's not that they get a lot of possessions; it's how efficient they are. Yeah, yep. yep. And they're happy to run too. So yeah. Uh, uh, well, that's uh, the thing. They're going to get some easy looks, so gladly take it. And they, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. They missed a free throw. Next thing you know, you got a dude in UConn already by the hoop down down the court. Yep. Alabama's yeah. got their thumb up their ass. He's like, oh, how the hell did that happen? Yep. Uh, Klingon uh, have 15 points and uh, um, uh, 10 rebounds per game. Newton, 15 points, five rebounds per game. Spencer, Caravan, all those guys. There's, they're all – all four of those guys are double-digit scorers. Uh, for the Huskies, it's a great team, man. It's probably one of the best teams I've ever seen. Uh, 11 and a half, I, you know, I, I, like I said, it's a lot for a final four game, but I, I, I can't, uh, I can't, I don't know. I mean, like Sean said, if, if the threes aren't falling for Alabama, it's not going to be close. That's the it key, could be yeah. 80, 80 to 50, you know, they're going to have to make up uh, in threes, but they're missed yeah. free throws. Yeah, now on the other side, we saw Grant uh, Nelson play uh, really well the last game. That dude uh, has been uh, uh, coming on strong these past few games for Alabama. Uh, if they if they start, they want to get down uh, in the rim. Let him try and and uh, uh, play in the post with with some of his speed and moves versus Klingon. Uh, you might open up the outside game for Alabama a little bit. But uh, what do you think? A live betting opportunity for this one too, Sean? Oh, mostly, yeah. For sure. Okay, Sean. It's likes either going to be over. close or it's going to be a blowout. Yeah, like everything we say this all every day. You know, every time we talk yeah. about a show. And the good thing is that you can live bet now, and you could get off something. I like Alabama. I think Alabama's going to score. I'm going to take the points, mm-hmm. but I also like UConn scoring. So give me their team yep. total over because I think it's going to be a. You know, I'm trying to look at the last time Alabama scored less than 75 points. Before you go into live you know, betting, it's no, Tennessee. Just, don't just look at the number. And be like, oh, I like that. Have a number in your head, be like, all right, I'm not taking anything less than this. I'm not taking anything more than that. Don't just be like, oh, well, UConn's up 12 nothing, and the live line is 14 and a half. Oh, yeah. let me take UConn. No. So I mean, that's, Alabama's line- only been under 75 points three times, twice to Tennessee and once to South Carolina. After that, they've scored 77 or more every other game, including a, a, a very large handful of games where they scored over 100 points, Sean. Uh, listen, UConn is better than all those teams. Yeah. But Alabama, you play some good teams. I get it. You lost. You lost to Arizona. You lost to Creighton. He's, you know. You, you know where Purdue won all those games. UConn lost that Kansas. I, I get it. Uh, but they're a team that the three pointer is a super equalizer for the any kind of underdog. Whether you're Grand Canyon, Eastern Michigan, don't make a difference. A team's going to get hot from three, and they could definitely get hot. That's how you score a hundred points a game. So. I got I to gotta look at the points on a team that scores 90 a game. I have to. I that was guess. mostly on their home court, though. On the road, that's where they struggled the most in those threes. Yeah, Kansas was healthy, too. Most. That was early in the yeah. season. Here's the thing, though. Now we're talking – in, but yes, but on, on the road is one thing in SEC play or Big 12 or Big 10. Big East, Neutral yeah. courts, what are we looking at here? 89, 89, 72 in, a, in an ugly game versus Grand Canyon. Everybody thought that was going to be over because Grand Canyon scored. That was just an anomaly. That was 109, just 88 against Florida in the game. 92, you know, I mean, well, that was at home against Arkansas. So their tournament games, they they had the, the anomaly was against Grand Canyon. Everything else 
on neutral floors against yeah. Carolina. Florida is a decent team. And Charleston it is what it is. They put 109 up. You're going to score 90 points against two ACC teams? You can't, you're telling me you can't get 75 here? I, I get 75. I'm, 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 I feel like I got to cover here. I still, I still think it comes down to their free throws because of how bad their free throw shooting is. If you watch, I mean, if you guys really watch the Bama games, you'll be surprised at how many times they go 0 and 2, 1 and 2. There's only oh, yeah. a couple of players on the team that actually hit their free throws. Three out of the five starters are just a brutal when it comes to free throws. So at the end of the game, and say they're up, just hypothetical, the team's up six. They might win the game two or three because hold the- on a second. No, no, no. Alabama guys? No, Alabama no, they they hit their freeze, Alabama guys. Maybe they free throws? They, now they're not hitting them here in, in the that's in the postseason. About. I'm talking about postseason. I'm not talking about regular season. Yeah. I mean, Sears is hitting eighty two percent. He was eighty six in the regular season. Oh, yeah. Estrada's I'm not looking hitting, at that. I'm talking he's about hitting, yeah. he's fifty seven percent in the postseason. Yeah. During the year he's eighty eight percent. So yeah. that's a total now he's having a hard time. And again, is that as, as I'm going to throw props to just Julie, is that his depth perception? Because now he's playing in a, a football stadium. It's totally different. Is he a little off here? Very well could be. Uh, yeah, I'm not talking about regular season. Bama was a good free throw. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about postseason. Yeah. You know, their first four guys were hitting 80, they're all over 83%. Yeah. Now, a little mm-hmm. different. Is it the pressure? Is it maybe you're playing more physical pressures on you? I mean, seventy percent still good. It's not eighty-eight percent. It's probably the atmosphere, the environment. I think it's, it's it definitely the court. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely the court. Yeah. So, State Farm Stadium uh, for the Final Four, uh, Glendale, Arizona. So uh, uh, UConn had a hard time getting to Arizona uh, with their flight uh, flight troubles, but they're there. They got there yesterday, I think. So it should be fine. It'll be fine. Uh, all right, where are we at? Was we? They won a championship game last year. They're, they're fine. That's just another thing. Like, hey, they're you're trying well to get coach. us. That's that's a motivation thing. They'll use that. Mm-hmm. Don't worry. That's Dan okay. Hurley's got that got that team down. Yeah, he's fine. I'm not worried about that. All right, now, so they were coming in tonight. That's a whole different story. Uh, we're taking a look at some baseball now. If, if you uh, want to move on from Final Four, yeah, let's go. All right, uh, baseball. We're talking. Uh, uh, Yankees lose their home opener. Um, I actually live bet the Yankees down one nothing in the seventh at plus one sixty. I mean, they're down one nothing. They're at home. I was like, yeah, it's hard to see the Yankees lose. I mean, down one nothing. They actually lose one nothing at home home opener. They've and been they've, lo- winning a lot of late games. Late so. games, exactly. Hitting other bullpens. So, it, was I mean, it, is what it, it was worth a shot. It was worth a shot. Uh, tomorrow, uh, game two. Anybody looking to get Yankees to take game two? No, I already bet Gaussman tomorrow minus 102. Give me Gaussman. I like, I'm a Gaussman guy. He's good. You know what? I, mean, I, a... I kind of like the under, and I think it's gonna be another low scoring game. And this Blue Jays, the problem is the Blue Jays yeah. can't hit yet, yeah, they, they don't, can't they hit. can't hit. Yeah, they're not hitting. And I got a guy who's gonna go seven and strike out nine guys. Yeah. And I got Clark Schmidt. We can't we can't get three runs. He's off Clark underrated. He, I mean, he's not bad. He, he I keeps don't mind. the team I'm, in the game. He keeps the team in the game. Yes, but I think we got a clear pitching edge on the other side. Oh yeah, one hundred. You have the whole. Yeah. Uh, I mean, John Carlo. You ever know, see him? His last twenty-two at bats, thirteen strikeouts. I was gonna say what eighteen strikeouts. <laughs> Close. Close. When I play MLB the Show twenty-four, first thing I do, I try to trade him. <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> this guy couldn't hit a bitch. He could not hit. A beach I, ball I, from the beach. I get, the I get out of that contract so fast. I'm trading Judge. I trade Judge and try to get somebody like anybody for Judge. I want that forty million off of my 2024 Yankee payroll. Well, it's pretty bad when teams are pitching to to face Giancarlo, and I mean Aaron Judge is getting there too. It's the Mets have tied at one one after six. Yeah, uh, the Reds blew a man. Great the Reds, uh, yeah, they had a uh, second and third. Yeah, um, and uh, get to the Mets bullpen. It's the Mets on a doubleheader. I mean, they're just oh, they're, there's yeah. no confidence in that team. So. I, I said I said today in midday. I said I said I want to take Oakland plus the two dollars. I said I just I can't. So someone mentioned yeah. last night. Hey, how about run line? So I did grab a run line plus. Wasn't one it juicy half. though? Wasn't it juicy? No, it was minus one ten. Oh, okay. is that I a still- joke? I, listen, I know Oakland's bad. I'll take a one ten off a team just because you played a doubleheader. And you got out of there late, right? It was a I good mean, spot. 
I mean, a good spot. It was like, like the it was Tigers' run line. I said no. A nope, day nope. opener from a double a header. Bad, bad spot as for bad as right the there. A's are. I there's one thing I'm doing this year. I'm there's no reason for me to bet the A's, and there's yeah, no reason for me to bet the Rockies. Yes, it was why? today was a spot to grab them. Team yeah. off a double header, travel, mm-hmm. and then have a one o'clock early game. Yep. Good spot. And you know, it's the a good spot. Off just, take it. Me personally, I'd rather just not play it. If I That's played the Reds, the Reds were the same game. thing. If you played Oakland, you had to play the Reds. Today. The same scenario, double header, well, an, extra, an, extra, an extra inning double header where both teams use what six, seven relievers. I don't care if throwing an inning, it's April. Yeah, still bet, and then you're traveling. Yep, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, the Reds pull us back out. Supposedly, yep. Diaz is not available tonight because he pitched what over an yeah. inning yesterday. So, I like Rock. the uh, Angels today. Angels run line. Let's go, Angels. Rockies with the walk-off grand slam. Uh, yeah, Red Sox and Angels, the nightcap tonight. Uh, Crawford versus Canning. You know what's a good play for tomorrow? Take the Yankees and the Jays nerfy. Because the Jays can't hit, that's your that's your weakness right there. Because Gossman's going to have a 1-2-3. He's probably going to have two strikeouts in the first inning. Take the nerfy tomorrow. It's probably going to be like minus 120, minus 130. Arizona opening it up tonight. Yep. Uh we're going to go right back to uh, Strider taking the team two. batting averages against Strider. It's always three and a half, just yep. like we did last year. Yep. Uh, Cubbies win their home opener. And today, uh, beat the Dodgers. Are the Cubbies for real, Sean? Uh, I have an over 84. I think they are. I, th- I mean, team total over I 84 mean, wins. Come on. You, what, today's total was seven. And, and there were 16 runs scored. Like usually, those totals are right on point over there. So I don't understand that. I, I get the Dodgers win. could hit. You know, um, are they for real? Yeah. Let's be honest. The, the Central's wide open. I mean, I, I don't know how good Milwaukee is. Again, Milwaukee has Peralta's coming out throwing gem, no hitting. Four strikes. The Reds. So what do you get from the Reds? Young Reds, young Pirates. Somehow people are high on St. Louis with a geriatric pitching staff. That's no, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, I think the Cubs have the best lineup. Like all teams, I'll say, just go get a pitcher. How the heck you, you couldn't sign Montgomery for $40 million? You couldn't sign so – what are you doing? What's, get the pitchers. You're, somebody's going to get hurt. That's just the way it is. Uh, I would also uh, take the Do- Cubs, Dodgers over tomorrow. It's going to be a low total with two lefties on the mound. Just like today's total. I mean, the Cubs are hitting since they started the homestand. Even with the win howling in, they started scoring. Yamoto Dodgers, we know they're going to score. I actually went in uh, into the game. It was uh, eight runs. I, I took the over 12 and a half in the six, fifth inning at plus 105. And I tried to it. get over 16 and a half, and it lost. <laughs> Too high. It was it was. It was the it was the top of the eighth, like sixteen and a half. I said that's one. I need. I can't get one run. I'm gonna have the top oh, of the order one. come up. I okay. I needed one run. Yeah. Yeah. I once I saw the Cubs score and the Dodgers come back and the, no, the Dodgers were at one run at the time. I was like, oh, this, you know, the Dodgers are gonna get some yeah. runs. They're gonna probably. So all I needed, I needed six runs at the time, and yeah, cash for these. So. Uh yeah, uh, that game I would. Honestly, that game I would just stay away from tomorrow. I mean, Jordan Wicks is pretty damn good. He doesn't go deep in the game. I think where the Dodgers take care of that game is in, I think they hit the Cubs bullpen because the Cubs bullpen has been beat up since the Rocky series with the weather and all. Uh, same with the Dodgers, but overall, I think the Dodgers even up the series tomorrow. And uh, I think the first five innings could be tight, but then all the scoring is going to be late. The bullpen pulled it out of eight. I mean, Alizé had two on, got out of it. I know. I saw. I was watching knife. it. I was watching while we were eating dinner. I was like, Merriweather, mm-hmm. three strikeouts, not bad. Smiley, Drew Smiley. Somebody's got a Drew Smiley auto somewhere. Rainbow. <laughs> no, no auto, no auto, just a rainbow. I mean, Miller gets shelled. Grove comes in, another starter, one of their young guys. Three innings, three earned. I mean. Yeah, uh, that's the thing about the Dodgers. Their starter, Bobby Miller, only went one and two-thirds. So their bullpen is taxed. So well, one guy, uh, one guy, Grove is a starter, and he went three. So I mean, that's the thing. This is why I'm not a huge fan of the Dodgers. Grove, Sheehan, no. Miller, they're all five inning guys. Gonsling, where's Gonsling? Yeah. Right. I don't think um, he's pitched yet. No, uh, Bueller's coming back from an injury. No, Kershaw's don't old. Don't remind Glass me. Glass now, I like Glass now, but uh, he's Glass sometimes knows. gets hurt. 
And then uh, we got the new guy. Of time. It's just a matter of time until he gets hurt. Okay. It's All right. Pitching, pitching, pitching. Yeah. But our Willie uh, Peralta over seven and a half strikeouts is halfway there already after two Damn, innings. Two innings. Two innings. Tooch was like, man, seven and a half strikeouts, a so lot. much. I'm like, dude, no. good. So we're targeting Seattle's not hitting. Picture. We're yeah. targeting the worst uh, team strikeout in strikeouts. Yep. They're ranked 32nd out of 32 teams. Yep. And where does uh, Peralta's? Uh, where does he get all his strikeouts at home? Yep. He's already got four and two innings. It's an it's an easy. I mean, that's why it was juiced like crazy. I got it at minus 150. It closed, I think, at minus 120. It was like, man. How about in. how about having under twelve and a half in a Tampa game game, eight nothing with like two outs in the ninth. Yeah, nine runs and five in the top of the ninth. Four. To Somebody five. on Twitter posted. It's like, what the hell happened? I had under twelve and a half. I was like, dude, it's never over till it's oh, over. It's goodness. Colorado, man. Nine runs in the ninth inning. I was like, dude, do you guys, can you guys get three damn outs? Holy crap! Thank God I didn't have that over or that under. I'd be because I was leaning on. It. I just couldn't touch it. Hunter Green's out. Looks like uh, uh, Fernando Cruz in for the Reds. Man on second, one this out. Where, this is where you hold your breath with the Reds. Yeah, this is the Mets. This is. I mean, I don't care who's on them. I don't care if it's the A's, the Mets, the Rockies. You, Reds bullpen is their weakness. All right. Uh, free plays now? Mm-hmm. Let's go. All right. Good. I've hit five in a row, so let's go for six. I know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, Anthony's free play, UConn, Alabama, under 161 and a half. Hold your nose, just like we did last week with Illinois. Hold your nose and (laughs) take the under. Sean likes those points with Alabama, 11 and a half. Uh, expects a lot of points too. Uh, this is my free play when they collapse on Zach Eady. I know it's juicy, but o- over one and a half assists. Uh, when they collapse on Eady, he passes it to one of the shooters. <laughs> I think he gets two assists pretty easy to me. This is free money. Uh, oh, that's a kiss of death. <laughs> mush. <laughs> it's mushed. Uh, he's had uh, he's had uh, uh, over two assists in, in who's, 13 of his last eight. This is a perfect spot when you think about it because Burns is guarding him. He's going to have to pass the ball off. Yeah. Yep. He's going to be doing it more at least. Let's just say yep. that. He's going to do it more. Yep. So yep. take the minus uh, 150 and run. I hate to say it like that. I mean, he's had an – listen, he missed the last two games, but that's all right because the three-point shots weren't, weren't falling there. Yeah, but, they weren't falling. Right. I, I like, I like the thought. 40. Listen, if he's he's going to kick it out because he's gonna they're going to come down double. Good spot. I like it. Yep. Uh, sign up with Sean, winning free picks. Anthony at poundedsports.com. Any last words, Sean? We got the uh, – Sean, uh, you don't like women's basketball, but I'll tell you, uh, watching exactly. Caitlin Clark was the first uh, first few times for me this season. I know <laughs> I live in Iowa and stuff, but I'm always like, women's basketball, how good could she be? She's pretty effing good. <laughs> it's, like, it's still a better product geez. than the NBA. She's a deadly shooter from three points. Man. If you, like, if anybody watching yeah. this has watched an NBA game this year or last year, watch the Iowa game. You're, you're going to like that game a hell of a lot more than any NBA. Yeah, game. Yeah, it was exciting, man. My the whole NBA, family were gathered around watching it. The I mean, if you ever watched the NBA this year, just put it out for like two minutes. You'll see. I've okay. never seen more space between a, a defensive player and an offensive player in my entire life. And I'll these guys the are professionals. <laughs> it's like you got to be at arm's length. Between each player, because you're not allowed to guard them. Sean I mean, doesn't they, even watch they, the NBA. I said to somebody in the show, they came in on my late night show, and it's like, oh, <laughs> you said Wimby's going to be a bust. I said, hey, Sean Bradley and Manute Bowl and Mark Eaton all rolled into one. Like, again, Wimby's I, the real deal, man. Uh, you know what? He, his arms are like 10 thing. feet long. How could he miss? 20 and 10. I get it. I, you know, I'm more impressed he's like a 75% free throw shooter, which is crazy for a guy that big where he's, you're actually yeah. like shooting down. He's yeah. the only I gotta see more. Can I get defense? more out of like one year out of a guy on a team one. that has 10 wins? You should be proud of this guy. You should be like, this guy's the MVP. This guy's the only one that plays defense in the whole league. Yeah. Does he play defense? He's that totally just puts his hands he, up. Yeah. He blocked Jokic six yeah. times. Jokic had a, a little bit of a struggle. Jokic. <laughs> Jokic is MVP. Like, okay. I mean, so come on. I right, listen. Those long arms going to the left hand. Yeah, the there's going to come a time where you just be like, you know what? I was wrong. Wemby's he's good. 
Not in not in seventy games where the team's got fifteen wins. No. Yeah. Now, he's the he whole team. I don't, he's the whole did team, you see yeah. the supporting cast? I mean, me, you, and Sean, me, you, and Suits can go out there. Supporting here we go to supporting cast. Oh, the supporting supporting cast. cast. I mean, what? Exactly. Let's see what they have. I mean, a lot of guys are on on one name one player besides Wemby on the Spurs. I can't. I can't name one. I can maybe name one player on nine teams. I so the guy in the show. I was like, listen, I don't watch NBA. I never. I said the last NBA game I really watched like a whole game. It was Mother's Day '93. Barkley shoots a three over David Robinson to send the Spurs. Uh, I guess uh, game you six. You watch the Jordan Finals in '97-'98? No, why would I? I was a I was a Barkley fan. Why would I watch this? Doesn't matter. That was a classic showdown. Even the- them, I, I listen. I spur. Maybe I would have caught something because we probably maybe bet it, but I'm not watching. I didn't watch the Super Bowl comes on. I mean, I'll, I'll sort of. I'm not. <gasps> oh! No. What rock do you uh, crawl from under, man? No. How do you not watch the Super Bowl? Nah, really. Even when I had the fan cave in AC, or where I'm not watching a game. I'm playing on my phone. I'm eating a sandwich, just talking. All right, go watch Kaylin Clark tonight. Why? Why am I gonna? I the game's over. It's a winner. I don't have to worry about it. I got a win in my pocket. <laughs> That's the way. How do you did do you that? Play, I don't know. Uh, you played in Iowa minus two and a half over UConn. I did. Sean too. Degenerates, get the hell out of here! Are you kidding me, degenerates? <laughs> here you are, freaking live betting. Oh, I should take the Yankees today. Ooh. Oh, I like no, the minus no, no. four and a half. No, I'm oh, degenerate. Watch Sean's live, uh, his card show. Talk about non degenerate <laughs> betting. He's like, let me look at this game. Oh, minus four and a half. I'll take it. <laughs> oh, it's, not degenerate. it's not degenerate betting. Well, I was trying to get, I'm trying to see if anybody's around, I'm trying to generate conversation in the chat. I got uh, uh, about 18 minutes to get that bet in for Iowa minus two and a half. You better lock it in now, but Yep, locking it in. Reds doing right things, blowing a bull no. on a game. Thank you, Reds. Yeah. Did they already? Nah, it's two to one. Ah, crap. I hate it's the not, It's not blown yet. But base is loaded, one out. <laughs> I'm mad I didn't Ooh. take the Rangers. I said I like the Rangers or five Jesus nothing. Christ. Two took the Rangers. I got the Rangers. Yeah, what are they losing now? They're up five nothing in a second. Oh, innit? Yeah. All right. Again, hey, you give me the Rangers hitting. at home a money Ash- line plus one fifteen. I'm taking it. You're gonna give me plus money with the world champs. Cool. Holy and- crap! Tuch is winning a dog play, and they hate each other. They yeah. hate each they other. Hate each other and, Houston, yeah. and Houston's not hitting right now. They're like the Blue Jays. I They're couldn't talk Anthony into this play this morning. I couldn't talk him into. He's like, "That's all you, buddy." Hey, when I'm hot, <laughs> I'm, I don't listen to nobody. I, I, I agree. Just stick with you're winning. Don't worry about yep. anything. Because yep. if it loses, I'll be like, yeah. just "Put the, put the blinders on and, and roll with your stuff. You're doing good." That's it. Yep. yep. Uh, yeah. All right, fellas. Uh, for Barroom Network, Sean and Anthony, we're gonna clock out of here. Um, We'll see you later. Enjoy the enjoy the games tonight, fellas. Yep. Good luck. Angels run line, degenerates. Let's go. <laughs>